Does it work? I think it works. Okay, hold on. I'm running a spot behind. I'm just going to grab my laptop. Okay. So, have laptop. Don't panic, I'm really here. Not that you were panicking, obviously. We've got plenty to be doing without me being in your lives. Um, right, as you may tell, I was running a touch behind there. I am up to much naughtiness, uh, as you might anticipate. So we, there's many things we have to cover off all at once. <coughs> One is that I don't have a voice. And if you ask me what's the one thing I could really, really use in the next 24 hours, it's my voice. <laughs> and you know how in life, um, sometimes you just think, right, okay, this, I'm being tested, you know, I'm being tested. So whether that was like epileptic seizures or, you know, when you're running against the wind or you get set upon by the, the darkness out there, or you have your whole life confiscated or, 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 or you go, right, I'm being tested. This has got to be the ultimate test, isn't it? You make it so I don't have stuff. I don't have a house. I don't have a bank account. I don't have the right to go to Australia. I'm banned from South Africa. And then you take my voice? Really? <laughs> <coughs> but never mind. So what we'll do is we'll just run for as long as I have a voice for. Is that good? Hello, Virginia. Hello, my loves. So yeah, do pile on here and let everyone else know where you're joining the Katie's Arms from because one of the great joys of this is for people to see how many we are in number and that, you know, you're not on your own. And uh, I'm trying to see if we can, I can, I, I suppose actually I could just move the tripod, couldn't I, as opposed to moving my whole body. Um, but regardless of, oh, nearly fell off my chair. So I'm, that's okay, that's better. Regardless of the fact that I uh, don't have a voice and I'm up to naughtiness on the road, I did make notes for the Katie's Arms 100 day cough, don't you know it? Those fuckers in Wuhan have got a lot to answer for, haven't they? Absolute bastards. It just goes on and on and on. Never mind. Um, I made notes for the Katie's Arms. I'm so proud of myself. Um, let me just find them. I appreciate that a professional would have this all ready to go, but I was in the bar. So you'll forgive me because this is the Katie's Arms. If you're a newcomer here and you wonder what the fuck is this woman doing, gallivanting about? Well, basically this is the Katie's Arms. It's our pub online and I am the errant landlord or landlady. Lovely Mark is the landlord. I'm the errant landlady that is up to naughtiness most of the time. So I have things for us to talk about here. And I love, these are all jolly things that I love. Oh, well, one of them's not jolly, but some of these are, jo oh no, two of them aren't jolly. Actually, one of them's the opposite of jolly, but two of them I love. Uh, Caroline Flax in there, Aintree Races. I just love, if you went to Aintree, please do, um, please God, do go on here and tell people, I love, I love you if you're a lady that went to Aintree races dressed like a fucking maniac. I I love you. If you're a, a bit big or you've got a massive gut or you've got massive tits or I don't know, you just got bits wherever they are. I love you. And if you wore fuchsia, I love you. And if you like, you've got your whole gunt out whilst you were drinking Prosecco, I just want you to know, I simply think you're terrific. And I've really changed in that department because I used to laugh along with the Daily Mail with all their pictures. And now I look at those pictures and I think they are glorious. I think the women are glorious. I rather admire the photographer actually for capturing what he thinks is sort of oh ho ho ho, but actually aren't those ladies brilliant? And then look, uh, I was looking at some of the um, some of the way they were writing this up. So an eye-catching ensemble. Basically, this woman had her whole gun out and her whole vagina. Hello to Essex. Hello, my loves. And can I just say as well, I did also get a wine glass. Look at this. This is a thing of rare beauty. Listen. 
Okay, let's just do that again. Where's the microphone? Are you ready? Do you know how expensive that glass is? <gasps> I'm so excited by that. Can you see how childish I am? <sighs> fancy. I'm somewhere fancy. Um, and I am up to naughtiness. <laughs> and I can't tell you till tomorrow night. Um, anyway. So the Daily Mail uh, with these pictures of their entry ladies, entry, sorry, eye-catching colourful ensemble. So this was basically a woman with her whole vagina out, dressed in hot pink, not giving a single shit. Whole, hello Cornwall, whole bottle of Prosecco downing the lot. Brilliant. Another one, ladies letting their hair down. It was basically three women so hammered they couldn't see their own, they, they wouldn't be able to see their own reflection in a mirror. Utterly lost. There were just bits of them coming out all over. There was like a tip coming out from underneath an armpit. There was like bits of pubes coming out the hem of their dress. And they didn't give a single shit because they were having a great time. I love them. Another one was um, emphasising their toned legs. So there were these massive chumbawambas like at least a hundred stone each, dressed in bright orange, fierce red, fucking massive fascinators, eight times the size of their heads on their heads. And I just, just like, yes, go on, go on girls. Just great. And, and Daily Mail goes emphasizing their toned legs. I mean, their legs have never seen tone in their lives. Like their legs are basically, you know, have been headed on a journey south since the day they were born. But it's just, can you hear that in the background? I don't know, can you hear that? That's, um, that's the streets of this place where I am. And very speedy vehicles being driven around. I know. So anyway, just to anybody, if any ladies going to the races, dressed up to the nines, having a brilliant time, getting smashed off your massive tits, I'd just like to raise a glass from the Katie's arms because I think you're terrific. Portugal's here. Hello, my love. Um, am I in Spain? No, I'm not in Spain, but this is a fun game. Um, it's warm. I've got the window open. Um, there's race cars racing around outside. Uh, Budapest is here. <laughs> am I in Bradford? That's such a funny thing. So I was... You know, I'm not in Bradford, thank fuck. A bit stabby there for me. I've done a story on Bradford before. My personal opinion is Bradford is a fucking shithole. And there's this article today in, I don't know where it was, BBC News, I think, saying Bradford, because a lady got stabbed whilst pushing a stroller. And it was like, this doesn't happen in Bradford. And I'm like, you lying bastards. That happens in Bradford every damn day. And basically how Bradford works, no one, no one will say this, but I've spent time that I lived there for a little minute so that I would understand the place. How Bradford works, right? There's the dodgy end, and that's most of Bradford. And then there's the little nice bit, the posh bit, right? And the police spend their entire times in the nice sort of nice bit, which has a certain culture in it. I like handing out driving fines and stuff because it's safe to police the nice bit because the police aren't scared to be there. But if you just go through the dodgy bit of Bradford, where I spent all of my time, there's all the garages that are basically just running drugs openly and no one goes near them. They're all garages. Yeah, sure thing. Um, there's all the cars that belong to the drug runners, pimped up supercars, and no one goes near any of them because they're the drug runners or they're the guys dealing with the women that fund the prostitution rings that fund the drug runners. No one touches them. And, and there's the arms dealers. They operate out of the garages and operate out of the barbers. No one touches them. And no one will say any of this because obviously it would be racist or anti, what would it be, Islamophobic. But it's just, it's just that it's so easy. If I wanted to go and buy drugs and, and weapons in Bradford, I know exactly where to go. And let me tell you, that garage definitely hasn't serviced a car in all of its history. I just go and ask Ahmed and I can get what I need. That's fine. I'm, ju I'm just stating facts for the record. You know, if anyone cares. Wild times, I know. 
I know. So anyway, I got diverted. Right, this other story that I just love. Does anybody out there, listen, how am I gonna do what I need to do tomorrow? I just need a voice. Can I borrow someone? I go, <coughs> what's gonna happen? <sighs> okay, never mind. Sam Fox. <gasps> Someone's joining from the Amalfi Coast. I was just reading about how it's gonna be swamped soon because everybody that's watched Mr. Ripley or Ripley is gonna be doing the Amalfi Coast so that they can show that, oh, this is where Ripley was filmed. I, Amalfi, is, I spoke to my husband about Amalfi earlier because I'm not doing another winter in the UK. Sam Fox. If you don't know Sam Fox, I love her. She's a massive, sturdy lesbian with huge tits and a massive gap in her teeth. Like, I don't think Sam Fox has ever used dental floss. Do you know what I mean? She uses more like those ropes that children swing off in children's gyms. Like, ah, 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 ah. like I know I've got like terrible teeth and a big nose, so the joke's on me. But like, ah, 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 she's got this massive hole in her teeth, massive tits, and she's always like, yeah. Sam Fox used to be a, um, she used to get her tits out. Was it on in the sun? She's super hot. Yeah, just watching from Bradford, you're not wrong. I know, hello Bradford. Like, I'm not got, I've got nothing against Bradford. I've got nothing against the drug runners in Bradford. Do you know what I mean? I've got nothing, I've got something against the effing grooming gangs, but that's separate. Drug runners, arms dealers. I'm just saying, I know where you are. You know where you are. We all know where you are. It's just the pretense that the police force don't. That's all. It's just, can we stop with the bullshit? Can we stop handing out 58 mile an hour and a 50 zone signs to the white guys? Like, just saying it straight. We're not fucking about. Anyway, Sam Fox. So super lesbian, super brilliant tits. Super model when she was back modeling her tits. It was epic. Like, was she, was she like, um, yeah, it's the opposite of helium. Are you talking about my voice? So was she page three? I want to say she was paid through, I need hot lemon with honey. Yeah, but where I am, that's not what they sell. Anyway, so she was in court, I think, today, and I'm not here to laugh at her or humiliate her because good on her, right? It's just epic. So she married this bird. She got twatted off her face and then had a fight with her wife on the British Airways flight <laughs> from London to Munich. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then when she was arrested, she threatened the police officer. Someone thinks it's the internet. It's not the internet that's going deep, it's my voice. She, which doesn't really help with the people that call me trans, right? They're like, she's trans. I'm like, I'm not trans, but this is not helping. So Sam Fox got all like drunk or Larry twatted her or maybe didn't or whatever allegedly allegedly had some massive fight with her bird on the plane and then when she got arrested she had threatened the police officer that arrested her she spent a night in the cells they get this the flight didn't take off all the passengers had to get off and were accommodated in a hotel <laughs> i love it i love it I love the whole thing. I love the story. I love that she got twatted. I love that she fought her wife. I love that she's a page three girl. I love it. I love the whole thing. I don't know, wouldn't be other people's. Could you hear that outside my window? Let me just say where I am is also very, very, very male. That's why you can hear all the cars. It is very, very male. Like to the point of being weird for me as a, as a vague woman. It's just very male. Anyway, Sam Smith, if you're out there, if you're watching on the Katie's arms, Sam, A, I think your tits are brilliant. B, I love me a freaking sturdy lesbian. I do. And C, good on you bird for having a full on fight on BA and then threatening the police officer as well. I love it. Right, I've got a serious thing. I don't know, are we in the mood for serious? Vroom again. Ah, so someone here is guessing Arab land. 
is Christian Horner about Monte Carlo. Oh God, this is so dull. Are you drunk? We have to do this every pub, don't we? Here we go. So because people aren't used to this kind of woman, people say, I'm not taking offense at all. Every single Katie's arms and when I post it after for people that couldn't join, people say, oh, she's drunk, she's smashed. I haven't drunk a thing apart from gathering this, but I'm, I'm, that's not, it doesn't matter if I was drunk, it's just that I'm not. But what's so interesting is that every single time I post this, even though I do them every week and have done for about four years, people say I'm drunk. And what's so interesting about that is it's a phenomenon that we cannot understand a woman who's just being herself. We cannot accept a woman who doesn't give a shit. We don't know any women like me. There are no women on the internet who are, I don't want to say like me because I'm not being like that. Like there's plenty probably, but no one is like me because everyone else is trying to get you to do something. Everyone else wants you to like them or they want you to buy some fucking shit they're selling or they're poncing around in their clothes going, oh, look at this, it's from Zara, why don't you buy this? Oh, look at this, shaky, shaky, shaky. Here's the capsule wardrobe. I'll oh, fuck off with your capsule wardrobe. No one has five things and you don't have five things either. And if your capsule wardrobe was so great, why are you flogging me another fucking five things a week later? What is it? A series of capsules that never ends. But because all of these people have people that manage them or pay them to say stuff, you're not used to this. And so the only way you can understand it is to say, oh, she's drunk. And in a way that was true in my earlier life, when I would say things that I still mean, like I wouldn't employ a fat person because I wouldn't. They'd annoy me every day. I'd be trying to help them and cure them every day. And honestly, I just, I just would find it, or I'd be like, come on then, let's go for a run. But my point is, then people explain me away by saying I was a monster. And now people see I'm not a monster. People try and explain me away by saying I'm drunk. I'm not drunk. You're just not used to real. Because everybody else has an employer or someone to please, or is trying to make money off of you. And I'm 100% not. Um, and I never ever ask you to stay here. I don't ask you to follow me. I don't ever, I've never once used the phrase, click the link, share with your friends, subscribe. Oh, fuck off with your fucking, share the link. Don't forget, hit subscribe, fuck off. I mean, follow along if you want, but if you've got better shit to do, 100% do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want you to subscribe, but I do want you to hang out if you want to. Or if I'm helpful to you in some way, laugh at me, great. So that explains the drunk thing. It doesn't mean I don't want to be drunk, I do, but I'm not, I'm no good at really being drunk. I have to be in control. I've always wanted to be one of those people that say they wake up and they can't remember a thing. I've never done that because I can't. I just can't. I'd love to, but I can't. I was going to talk about Caroline Flack, but I think that's a bit sad. But we can. 100% um, right, Katie, drunk. No, I just taught the truth. Well, I just taught what I believe. And I don't, um, you know, everyone else is blowing someone and, they, and, they, and they'll sell you, I'm a free speech hero. You know what I mean? Like GB News, we're here for free speech. Like, fuck you are. You're all, oh, you know, Murdoch. Oh, you don't want to miss your thousand pound page. Oh, so sorry to do blowies live, but you know what I mean? I, I, it's, it's all cool with me. I'm not, I'm not putting them down, but you're not. You want your paycheck and you're, oh, stay within the lines to get it. I'm not going to, whatever, you know. Okay, um, I mean, I probably would blow Elon. That's a different thing. So cheers to everybody at the Katie's Arms who understands me and to everyone who's beginning to understand me or if you're a newbie and you don't understand at all. Everybody is welcome here. 
And can I go, can I go a bit serious just for a minute? If you're just joining, this is the voice I currently have. I don't know what to tell you other than I'm being tested, but I will not be beaten. Um, so I'm just going to go serious for two minutes. Definitely talk about Caroline. Uh, well, I suppose that these things are kind of linked. So one is that um, there's a horrible, horrible thing, which is that, sorry, just, did I slightly flash my, I slightly give you a, a vaginal view. I wasn't trying to give you direct up my foof, although there is an echo up there, obviously, or down there, whichever direction you're headed. Things can get lost up there, I tell you. In fact, I would be, talking of Bradford and drugs, I would be a bloody epic drug smuggler. I'm just going to say, Mohammed, if you're listening, or Akbel, or Akbud, or Akmed, I'd be a fantastic fucking drug smuggler. Like the amount I could fit up my, I'm telling you now, like where you are currently using ladies or young girls, and maybe they can only fit like, I don't know, maybe they can only fit half of this up there. I could fit at least, I mean, I, I reckon a two litre bottle. I'm not saying that that's how you transfer drugs, but you know, if ever I was going to do drugs, smudge, smudge, smudgling, vaginally there is it's capacious you know what i mean serious moment uh where I, I stop offering my foof to drug smugglers of bradford that's an unexpected phrase i didn't expect to hear at the pub this evening so these are two things that i'm going to get onto this week probably um in america the number two cause of death age 25 to 34, men and women, is suicide, right? I know this took a turn. I know we were laughing about my vagina a minute ago. But this other thing that's really, no one's, I can't even, where is, I mean, surely someone should care, but age 10 to 13, the second leading cause, to so the first cause in America for this sort of thing is accidents. So like shit that happens, car accidents, I'm guessing, just shit that happens. The second cause of death is suicide. And I, I'm not trying to be like a Debbie Downer here, the Katie's arms, but it does rather lead me to the point of what this is or what we're trying to do here. It's, um, is Jesus, God, we have got to get people to hang on because if you're 10 to 13 or 25 to 34, and you don't want to carry on, I have got to get to you and tell you it's definitely worth hanging on in there. I promise you. I promise you. And it is a bit shit, you know? It's, and I totally get you can't see a way or why to bother. You don't know why there'll be... And you look around and everyone's on a phone and you... But I promise you there is a way. And that's what the Katie's Arms really was started for. It was started as a way when I knew way back that lockdown was bullshit, that COVID was a manufactured bullshit. Okay, you can get this thing, it's real, but crucifying a population was by design and it's still happening. And the reason it's the second biggest cause of deaths for 10 to 13 year olds in America, why do you think that is? And why are people not having kids? Because they can't see the point because the world's so fucking terrifying. So I, I guess, behind the laughing at me. That was always the point of the pub and it still is. And it's the point of the tour. You know, it's the point of doing, if I'm vaguely funny in some way, laughing at the madness, that's got to be better. That people get together, you know, and realize it's worth it because it is. I promise it's worth it. You might not be able to see why right now, but I promise it's worth it. If you don't believe it, I'll turn up on your frigging doorstep and I'll make it worth it. And that's a threat. So, yeah, that was the point of Katie's Arms, was to remind people to keep going. And that's what I do, I, I guess, on my social media. That's what all my social media is now. It's just about saying, oh, come on, let's, you know, put on a bright dress. Go to Adrian. Fucking dance like no one's watching with your gunt out. Come on. 
Go be do Sam Fox, get smashed on a plane, punch your other half up, threaten a police officer, spend the night in the cells. Woohoo! Like, don't feel judged. If your life isn't exactly perfect, or you've screwed up a bit, or you've fucked up quite a lot, or you're not that proud of something you've just done, don't, don't go dark. Just say it out loud. I have done whatever you've done wrong or bad or you're not proud of. I've done worse or been humiliated for worse. Hopkins sacked from this, Hopkins fired from this, Hopkins deported from here, Hopkins banned from South Africa, Hopkins collapses in the street in Pretoria, Hopkins takes ketamine and collapses, well, you know, I didn't. I was given it by an ambulance person. I had an arm dislocation, but the facts don't matter. Look at the humiliation I've had. And I'm still here to tell you, it's okay. It's a, I've done worse. It's okay. You're gonna, if you get up and you, if you manage to give your bits a wash and maybe you get outside the front door, you're winning, I promise you. And if you feel like shit today, Tomorrow, you might win a bit better. Honestly, you can fall back on me. <laughs> You've probably, you can probably speak. I can't even speak. Look at me. And yet here I am, somewhere, up to naughtiness that will be revealed tomorrow. Um, so, listen, where's my wine? I know, right? It's getting pretty bad now, isn't it? I better stop. And I always try and keep it to half an hour. I didn't think I'd make 10 minutes today, actually, but there we are. Hold on. I will get rid of this sometime soon. But for now, do remember, if you can understand what I'm saying, I mean what I'm saying. You know, I have enough in me to get you through. So lean in it, lean on it. You know what I mean? Lean on me and I will push you through this fucking thing. If I have to, uh, I'm very willing. Where I am today, actually, a guy had a very, very, very nasty, he came off one of these, what are they, electric scooter things? Fuck, he flew through the air. Oh my God. And then I think when he opened his eyes and I was there leaning over him, trying to help him and just, he had a, I think he broke his collarbone, I'm pretty sure. He looked, opened his eyes, he looked even more frightened to see me leaning into his face than he would have done if he realised he'd broken his collarbone and maybe his wrist as well. <laughs> but I saw him look at me and think, fuck! <laughs> I think maybe, I think maybe he thought, fuck, I've gone to hell. <laughs> I was like, it's okay, you're gonna be okay. We've got this sorted, help's on its way. Don't you worry about a thing. But in his eyes, I just saw, fuck, it's that fucking awful woman. I'm in hell. <laughs> anyway. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, keep in touch in the next 24 hours and you'll see the naughtiness that I'm up to. Um, but for now, from me, Katie Hopkins, thanks for being part of Katie's Arms. And uh, we're sold out on the tour in April, but we still have seats in May and June. Uh, if you'd like to come join us, then you won't regret it, I promise you. It's www. I don't know what this is. This is what typing looks like, is it? To think I used to be a columnist. www.katiesarms.com and if you're a drug dealer in Bradford and you need a mule, people always think I look horsey, may as well be a jog mule. Mule, well I, I'm just sure, I'm just saying, I'm just saying my job. Is... So you'll be able to fit like loads, I'm just saying get in touch <laughs> okay i'll uh, i'll see you all somewhere on the road